Well, that was really exciting. Thank you, Gino. Um, I really enjoyed that, actually, that scatter graph where you could uh, visualize the patients. Um, and, uh, that was really, really cool. So next up, we have uh, a really cool app to present, which is called Vision. And Dr. Uh, David Vining from MD Anderson, uh, who was the medical director um, of the, um, I'm going to get this right, the process uh, vision and... Image processing Image and process visualization, visualization laboratory. Visualization laboratory. There we go. A little complicated, but um, he calls this the Facebook app for medicine. I'm really looking forward to it. Very good. Thank you. And thank you for everyone that's here this afternoon. I am a diagnostic radiologist at MD Anderson. And let's see if our, my slides will come up. There we go. Uh, as a diagnostic radiologist, one of the observations that I've made about my field is that it has not changed since the time Röntgen discovered x-rays in 1895, because we as radiologists generate intellectual vomit out of our mouths onto a piece of paper as a radiology report, which makes it difficult to track disease. We have many ways of saying the same thing. It's very tedious to do any type of disease monitoring, especially if you're trying to read um, findings from, what, from one report to another. At MD Anderson, we have patients with hundreds of reports, so oftentimes critical information is lost somewhere in the middle of all those reports. And then if you try to do data extraction or data mining from that information, it's very difficult or, and very inefficient. So potential solutions in diagnostic imaging are to create things that are called structured reports but that has many different meanings for different um, organizations and people. For instance, our parent organization, the Radiological Society of North America, has created hundreds of structured reporting templates, and they expect radiologists like myself to be able to read an um, x-ray study and fill out these checklists, but that's not the way we practice. I don't know anyone in this country that uses these templates. What we've tried to do, though, is capture the natural workflow of, of a radiologist, and that is simply sticking our finger on the film and saying, where is it and what is it? Like lung cancer, colon polyps, gallbladder, gallstones. And that's the essence of what we have done with this app. But we do more than that. We create a unique, novel, multimedia structured report, and our inspiration for this product that we call Vision is simply this. I played a lot of this before I went to medical school. So the game operation, so that on this graphic of a patient, we overlay these image findings. Actually, this is it in our own application. So that in a single view, we can see the entire radiographic history of a patient by portraying the most recent image findings specific to anatomy, regardless of modality. We are basically compositing images onto this graphic of a patient. And if we want to see a, a history of a finding, we can click on that finding, and we generate a disease timeline showing progression of disease, both in terms of linked images as well as plotting out the metrics. And we are now actually um, integrating treatment icons so that we can show when certain treatments like surgery or radiation um, therapy have been affected and have, might have affected the, the course of disease in terms of the images. So how does it work? Well, what we simply do is we take a screen capture of what we see on any imaging system, whether it's a PAC system or a 3D imaging workstation, and we extract the image off of this screen capture and upload it to a cloud server. So as I talk about this image with my microphone, I capture this image and my voice, I upload it, and from that voice, we extract metadata to tag that image. But because we use screen captures, we integrate with no one vendor, but we interface with all of them. So we can take screen captures of any product. And an image is worth a 1,000 words, but we tag every image with two words. We tag it with metadata extracted from that voice description with both anatomy and pathology. In a way, I call this the Facebook of medicine because we're simply tagging images with metadata, uploading them to a cloud server, and then organizing that information. Although, given the last couple of weeks, the Facebook analogy is um, not a good one to use. And with this database of image findings that we create, we support multiple applications besides just the obvious of data mining. 
For instance, we can now take that disease timeline concept for one site of disease, but aggregate information from multiple sites of disease, and then automatically affect something called RESYST, which is the response evaluation criteria in solid tumors, something that we use every day in oncology centers like MD Anderson. And in this particular case of disease, we're actually able with our system to pick up things like mixed response, so that four out of the five tumors are actually improving, but there is an outlier where it's actually getting worse. And in this new day and age of targeted therapies, where we're targeting specific sites of disease based on their genomics, trying to pick up mixed response is a much more critical factor than just saying, well, the patient looks better or worse. We keep an audit trail of who did what and when, so that if we go back and we make a change to a prior image finding, we can record that change and then send out automatic notification to whomever has ever touched that patient. Likewise, we can then tag certain image findings, such as those that are urgent or life-threatening, and send out automatic notification to the referring physicians. And we have now translated our medical lexicon, the, the fuel that runs our engine, to multiple languages. So in this case, we can now create a report in English. Here's the image and the findings and automatically, with the push of a button, translate it to multiple languages, including Chinese, Arabic, Portuguese, French, and we're hoping to conquer the world. And with that, we can now support worldwide clinical trials. So the bottom line is our vision reporting system. With it, we're able to follow a patient over their entire lifetime, from birth till death, in a single view. And it's not limited to just radiology, but as this image shows, medical photographs of like a melanoma or endoscopy with colon polyps, anything we can portray on a computer screen, we can simply capture, upload it, tag it with metadata, and create a vision report. And with that, I thank you for your time. Thanks. Any questions? Hi, my name is Elisa Hughley. I'm a healthcare blogger for Inbloom. I was curious, is this cross-platform your application? Sure. Um, it, because we take a screen capture, again, I integrate with no one, but I interface with everyone. Mm -hmm. I had a product similar to this 10 years ago, but the bane of my existence as a small startup company was the integration with GE, Siemens, Philips, and others. If I needed them to adopt a standard or give me their API, they basically owned me. But after learning my lessons in time, now I can steal from all of them. And one quick follow-up. Um, based on that then, um, by FDA standards then, when you download and use the app, are you a medical device? No, I am simply a report, I'm a class one device. I, I am simply a reporting system. So I am not doing the image analysis with my software. I use my GE or Siemens or Philips workstation to do the image analysis. That's the, the device that needs 510K clearance. I simply have to just register mine and report adverse events. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Benning. That was, um, you know, data visualization is the next frontier, right? Uh, this human-machine interface is, is, is key.